Hi everyone, today I am here to do the nonfiction on booktube tag. And I'd be a little weird doing this because I'm not like a nonfiction booktuber. I don't think that were someone to describe my channel, they would particularly reference how much nonfiction I read. Because I honestly don't read that much of it, but it is always something that I'm trying to fit more of in. I consider it to be a valuable and important part of my reading diet, even though it does not have a predominant spot in like my reading. Um, but I would like to change that. Anyway, enough preamble, I'm going to start with the questions. Starting with, how much nonfiction do you read? I alluded to this a little bit. Not too much. Um, I've looked back over my spreadsheets that I've kept since 2015, looking at how much nonfiction I've read year to year, and it usually falls between 15 and 20 percent. Uh, I sneak in like one or two every month. That kind of is how it breaks down. Um, of course, I would love for it to be more. Part of why I don't read as much nonfiction as I would hope to, I think, is because I much prefer to consume my nonfiction through audiobook. I don't just, I just don't read that many audiobooks in a month. I don't have a super long commute, thankfully. And I also listen to a lot of podcasts, which tend to get priority over audiobooks for me. Like I'll go to an audiobook once I've kind of exhausted my podcast feed. Um, and I just listen to so many daily podcasts that it's, it does, it is difficult to fit them in. I could do better though. Um, but I, I don't tend to gravitate toward the books, um, nonfiction books that I buy physically in print. I do buy them on occasion and then they just languish on my shelf forever. So I should be better about that too. But anyway, the short version is that I, I read one to two nonfiction books every month. Question number two is what kind of nonfiction videos do you make or that you want to make on book two? I have in the past made some nonfiction recommendations specifically for nonfiction November and I can link those below. I have also made a video talking about my favorite memoirs. I think that also might have been in conjunction with a nonfiction November. I'm not sure, but I definitely have a video talking about my favorite memoirs and other and then, and then another one talking about general nonfiction recommendations. I, of course, also fit nonfiction into my wrap ups. I would love to review more nonfiction. I've had a couple of ideas of things that I want to do in the future, for instance, and this is not original, but doing a fiction and nonfiction pair, read a, um, a nonfiction book and then read a fiction book that includes that subject. I have one of those in mind. I don't own either of the books that would be required for it, so it's not necessarily something that I'll be making soon, but uh, I like the idea of being more informed about a thing and then reading a novel that kind of incorporates that. Um, I really wanted to do that over the summer with How to Survive a Plague and The Great Believers, which both talk about the AIDS crisis, but How to Survive a Plague was much better than The Great Believers, so I just didn't think they, they were worth comparing, um, but something along those lines. I would love to make more videos like that and fit that into my reading. It just requires me to be a little bit more thoughtful in what I pick up and I tend to have no attention span when it comes to reading so I'll just jump from book to book and I don't really think too much about how they relate to one another. It just is like 100% mood reading so I don't often think to read those books in conjunction with one another either. So it just takes more planning on my part both in finding books that I think would make good pairs and then the actual reading of them and then talking about them one video. Question number three is what's your favorite subgenre of nonfiction? I know a lot of people have already said memoir, but I too love a memoir. I think there's something really personal about hearing someone tell their own story, particularly on audio, if it's read by the author, there's something even more personal about that. It feels like someone's confessing to you like all of their deepest thoughts and secrets, which is a cool thing to experience. Um, obviously, you know, it's through a lens of what they felt comfortable putting on the page, but some, you know, memoirists can be quite raw and quite, um, they'll go there. And I think that that is a really special thing. It just feels like a very human kind of writing. Like fiction I know is also quite human, but there's something very, very tender about someone telling you their story, that things that happened to them personally and how they felt and how they responded. And um, so I love memoir, but I do also really love food writing. And this often can be paired with memoir, um, like reading memoirs by people who are chefs or have worked in the food industry. I also really love hearing the way that people can write so beautifully about food is really fun and special to me. I'm a person who loves food and loves thinking about food and I really enjoy cooking. That's a thing that I've started getting into in the past couple of years. There is something really special and singular about the experience of reading good food writing. Question number 
four is do you have a favorite nonfiction book? I have several that I wanted to choose, but, but my first thought was a particular book. So I'm going to just stick to one um, and not cheat. And I'm going to highly recommend the memoir In Order to Live by Yeonmi Park. Yeonmi Park is now an activist, but she is also a North Korean defector. She and her mother defected from North Korea into South Korea and also China, I think. It's been a few years now since I've read the, read the memoir, but her journey out of North Korea was deeply upsetting. Um, and her, the way that she was able to um, learn and grow after that experience is just so inspiring. She's my age and just the things that she went through, um, I think there was something more visceral about it for me because we were, we're only a couple months apart in age. And it was just so visceral thinking about where I was when I was 14 and where she was when she was 14 and they were happening concurrently. Um, and so many, things, I mean, I've read this, I mean, I think I read this like three or four years ago, so I just hadn't really had the experience before of reading something about someone who was my exact age, um, us being born in the same year. Definitely a thing that um, made me think a lot and was a big emotional draw of the, the memoir for me, but also just a powerful and inspiring story. It's deeply upsetting. It's the memoir that has moved me the most and it made me cry and very few audiobooks have brought me to tears and this was certainly one of them. So it's probably the nonfiction book that I would recommend the most highly. Question number five is, what do you think keeps people from wanting to read more nonfiction? And I think the number one thing is that it's people assume that it's going to be boring. That may be oversimplifying it, but that to me is just like the biggest reason is that they don't have the experience of reading nonfiction for fun and therefore they assume it's all like reading a boring history textbook. I also think that people find the real world to be quite depressing and they're not wrong. Uh, so, you know, people will read for escapism and nonfiction doesn't necessarily feel escapist. Um, I think people might assume that it has something to do with current events or history, um, which can be dry and boring, but also depressing. So um, I think there is an element of that and just a lack of awareness of like the breadth and depth of the kinds of nonfiction that are out there. We on BookTube were in a bubble where people read so much and are aware of so many different titles and genres and you know new releases and stuff. If someone only reads one or two books a year, they might not know what nonfiction book to pick or might not even feel compelled to choose nonfiction over fiction. I think it's probably just lack of awareness, lack of exposure, lack of understanding that not, not all nonfiction is boring or current events related or history. Question number six is why do you like nonfiction? You know, I still think I'm learning about what I do and don't like about nonfiction just because it only makes up a small piece of how much I actually read. So I'm still I'm still learning. Um, but the things that I have, have tended to like um, or I've been, I've gravitated to is I love that personal connection that you can get with a memoir um, and feeling like you know a person really deeply, even if you'll never meet. There's something really unique about that. Um, and just knowing that this is something that happened, or even if it is flawed because memory is flawed, that this is how someone feels. There's something really deeply emotional about that connection that I don't think is as achievable in fiction. I love things that make me critically examine the world that I'm in. Fiction can do this as well, but I think that um, nonfiction can do this in different ways. For instance, um, essay collections that are tackling like issues of today. Um, I think essays have a really direct an interesting approach to talking about current events and issues. Again, I love food writing. I love seeing how people have connected with food and the way that food impacts people's lives differently because obviously it's a thing that we all need to consume. It's a thing that I care a lot about and I'm very interested in. And I just, I mean, you can read good food writing and fiction as well, but there's something different about someone talking through their experience, like cooking a meal or how they, how they learned a particular recipe or why that recipe is really important to them in their life or where they came from. You know, there's so much about food that is tied to um, culture and humanity that I find very interesting and very, um, very comforting. The biggest umbrella is someone telling me a really great story. Um, and it, it just, that's just like fiction. Um, nonfiction contains just as many fascinating stories. I think it largely depends on how they're told and what you're drawn to. Another thing that I, I didn't mention is that I really like, this is very random, but I love reading about fraud. So this is the thing that I've discovered. I've only read a few books that tackle this topic, but I find them utterly fascinating. First being Bad Blood by John Carreyrou. Just reading about the Theranos company and how Elizabeth Holmes just scammed so many people. I just, I found that utterly fascinating. Um, and also I felt that a little bit with the um, memoir My Friend Anna, which is about um, a woman who pretended to be really rich and scammed people. And this was also covered in the essay collection Trick Mirror. There is a whole 
essay about fraud and fraudsters and our fascination with them that I thought was very interesting. So I'm just, this is a thing that I'm, I have a developing interest in that I would love recommendations for. It's like true crime, but no one gets murdered. And it's more about the process than it is about the perpetrator or the victim. That's why like true crime, like real true crime doesn't appeal to me as much because usually it focuses on the murderer and their motivations and then the person who got murdered and how and why. And I don't find that as interesting. And also I don't really feel like I want to be fascinated in someone that killed another person because often it's a woman who was killed and I don't really like to revel in the idea of women being murdered. So I have issues with true crime, but I'm kind of interested in it as a phenomenon particularly when like no one gets murdered. Cause obviously people in with Theranos got hurt, but no one died. So I don't know if that's where I draw the line, but to me, they feel different. So yeah, if you have recommendations for true crime that doesn't involve murder, hit me up. Moving on to number seven. What is a nonfiction book that you read because of booktube? Um, all of them, pretty much all of the nonfiction that I read, I get through recommendations from people on booktube, but I guess I can mention some highlights. I've already mentioned a couple, but Bad Blood by John Carreyrou, I don't think I would have picked up were it not for the hype. Educated by Tara Westover, I also feel like is, I mean, it was everywhere, but I heard about it first on booktube and people's undying love for that definitely made me more interested in it. I don't feel like I would have ever heard of The Trauma Cleaner, One Woman's Extraordinary Life in the Business of Death, Decay, and Disaster. I don't think I would have ever encountered that book were it not for booktube because it's Australian. It's a biography. It's not a memoir. The Recovering, Intoxication, and Its Aftermath, I found out because of booktube. A False Report, A True Crime Story of Rape in America, I found out because of booktube. Quark Dork, I don't think I would have ever read were it not for Olive and her glowing recommendation. It's a memoir all about becoming a sommelier. Those are just some examples, but there are most, most of the nonfiction I've read, I found out first through booktube. Question number eight is what is the best nonfiction book that you've read lately? And I've already mentioned this book, but Trick Mirror by Gia Talentino. I probably don't need to tell you about this book because it is everywhere. It's like the buzzy essay collection out right now. Gia Talentino is a former Jezebel writer and she also has written for The New Yorker. She also was in the Hulu Firefest documentary and man, talk about fraudsters. I was obsessed with those documentaries. The Hulu one is definitely better. So it's, a really great collection. Um, there was one essay that really fell flat for me in the collection, but otherwise I thought it was interesting and thought provoking and I made my partner read it so we could talk about it, which I really enjoyed. Um, there just is so, so much good stuff in this collection. Um, so much food for thought, things that I hadn't thought of before. For instance, that fraudster essay I really enjoyed. There's a great one that I really liked about the wedding industry. As a person who's not really interested in getting married, I could relate to it, um, but it also had some good, you know, chewy things to think about. I also particularly really liked the essay, we, Can't, we Come From Old Virginia, which is all about the University of Virginia and her experience going to that school, but also its history of racism and sexism kind of embedded in the fraternities there. Like I said, the one about like fictional heroines was the only one that really fell flat for me. The rest were amazing. I keep mentioning this essay collection in conversation because it comes up so much. Um, things I thought about because of this collection or things I learned from this collection come up so frequently in conversation somehow. I'm constantly, constantly recommending it. It's probably really annoying, but it was very good. Question number nine is what are some of your nonfiction reading goals? I don't have any concrete goals. I think I mostly just want to read more of it. There are so many that I want to read and I just need to make the time to read them. Um, make time for those audiobooks. The go for a walk, listen to an audiobook for a little while. It's not that hard. I just need to make the time for it. And that's a really vague goal, but I would love if my nonfiction reading made up maybe 25% of what I read instead of 10 to 20. Um, I mean, I could shoot higher, but I don't know. Just being such a staunchly like fiction reader and loving fiction so much, it has been difficult to slowly work nonfiction into my reading, but um, booktube has been a big part of that. I'd never read any nonfiction really for fun before I started booktube. And question number 10, what's your advice for incorporating more nonfiction into your reading diet? I mean, the big thing for me is audiobooks. If you like podcasts, listening to a nonfiction book is basically like listening to a podcast, but longer, which is great because I love long podcasts. Um, but I just have spent, especially just coming off the heels of doing 15 hours a week um, at an internship where I could listen to not, uh, podcasts and audiobooks, I was dying for more things to listen to because I was listening to so much. It's basically the recommendations that you hear for audiobooks in general, but any of those little spaces in your life where you could fill with listening to something, doing the dishes, cooking, driving, cleaning, um, those are all times where I'm listening to audiobooks walking to campus. I listen to audiobooks and podcasts. So yeah, just making the space for it. I think watching booktubers who talk about nonfiction is a great way to get excited about it because there's something contagious in the booktube enthusiasm. I know 
you probably feel it too when someone gets really hyped on something you immediately want to pick it up so i think watching booktubers who talk about nonfiction enthusiastically is also a great way to get more into it i'd also give maybe um reading graphic novel nonfiction to try. I haven't mentioned any in this video, but I have really, really enjoyed some of the um, graphic memoirs I've read. For instance, Fun Home by Alison Bechtel is a classic of the genre. It's very beautiful. I love it. Um, a more recent recommendation would be The Best We Could Do by T. Bui, another beautiful memoir. Um, so those are low commitment. You know, they take maybe an hour or two to read. Fun Home's a little bit more dense, so maybe a little bit longer, but not as much as a full nonfiction book, and you're still reading nonfiction, it's just in a graphic format. Um, so that could be another way to try and get into it. Um, I would love to read more graphic nonfiction. I just need to seek it out again, just my own fault. So those are some strategies you could try. They aren't necessarily the most original, but they're worth giving a shot. That is the nonfiction on booktube tag. I wasn't tagged by anyone and I'm not really gonna tag anybody, but if you are interested, please do the tag. I would love to find more people who are enthusiastic about nonfiction too, um, because it's a thing that I should definitely prioritize more of. Let me know your thoughts on any of the books that I talked about in this video down in the comments and your thoughts on nonfiction reading, recommendations or channels, I would love those if you have them. And other than that, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.